hi everyone and welcome back to another vlog so i've been meaning to do this vlog for a while i just haven't got round to doing it so i think about nine months ago i'd done a part one vlog talking about how i secured Jaden an education health and care plan and this is a follow-up video so this is part two on talking about how i secured education healthcare plan for Imogen and my experiences because both children their needs are different and my experience of securing an EHCP for both of them um, was very different. Um, if you haven't checked out um, part one please go back and do so I'll put a link up the top um, to the video. Um, so yeah I'm just gonna speak about by experiencing getting Immy's EHCP. So Immy is currently six years old and she is in her second, no, yes, so I'd say a second specialist setting. So to cut a long story short and just to give you a bit of a background, Immy, I raised concerns with my doctor around 14 months with Imogen. Because I had Jaden, I kind of saw signs of developmental delay um, or additional needs with Immy and like her behaviour. She had issues with like walking, um, regression with her speech and not speaking at all and concerns around her gross and fine motor development as well. Um, Imogen started off at a specialist play facility um, for children who were referred through speech and language therapy. Um, it was a play, it was like a, how would you describe it? It was like a, um, it was a play sessions for children with additional needs or who lacked language or had difficulties with communication needs so she used to go there tuesdays and thursdays from about the age of one and a half i'd say she's come a long way since then so that was her first setting but um parents would stay at that setting with her there wasn't no paperwork or anything like that done we'd just go and if we needed support there were workers there to support us and to like pinpoint us to any services that may help um i wanted to try and help with Immy's development and communication so i looked at um a montessori nursery she went there three days a week and they actually funded a one-to-one -one for us, which was great. Whilst in that nursery, she had an IEP, which is Individual Education Plan. And it highlighted certain areas that she needed support in. And then it had another area what spoke about um, what activities could be put in place to help support in the areas where there were concerns. Um, she didn't stay in that nursery very long. I think it was only about six months. Um, and then she went to a specialist nursery for children with speech and language difficulties. This was a specialist nursery within a school, but it was for children who were nonverbal or who had language or communication delays or difficulties. Um, this was the first time really leaving her and letting her go off and it was great because she needed it and the staff there were trained in um, helping support the children with additional needs they had a speech language therapist there and an occupational therapist as well um, from this point when Immy started that she started I'm trying to remember um, 20 she was three I believe so was it 2021 2021 I think she started 
it was either 2021 or 2022, I can't remember because there's literally so many things that's happened between all the kids. I can't remember exactly when she started, um, but she had to wear full uniform. And um, this is really where her journey began and where I started seeing progress within her development and her communication obviously has taken time but this is where I really started seeing it so when she attended this nursery they specialized like I said before um in dealing with children with like communication language difficulties and the staff were like highly specialist speech and language therapists uh, the manager of the nursery um, had worked in other schools school settings with children with additional needs and they actually offered um, parents um, training around speech and language, sensory needs, um, behaviours, Makaton, things like that and they were the ones that actually started the process of applying for the EHCP. So for me, it was a bit of a shock because with Jaden, I didn't have that. I had to kind of figure everything out for myself and apply myself. Whereas with Imi, the school done it for me. And I was so happy because I thought, you know, I'm not going to have a battle on my hands with Jaden. I had a battle on my hands. If you go back to the other video, you'll, you'll see how I had to apply like three times before he got approved. Um, an EHCP and before the whole assessment process started but with Imi because the school were doing it and it was a setting where there was identified needs um, they said it was guaranteed that um, the children there would get a care plan so I didn't have to get the ball rolling they started which was great the only thing I had to do was like um I've done like all of her personal information, um, family history, parents' views, what I felt Imogen's views were, um, which was a huge, huge weight because anyone who has or has gone through the process of getting EHCP, it is one daunting, two strenuous, it is stressful, it's a lot of, and it's emotional because you know your child needs it to get the extra support but when you're writing down or reading back the information about your child like it does it does something to you because you're outlining the difficulties they have no parent wants their child to have difficulties or challenges so that part's hard when you're reading it back but if you don't put this information in then our children won't get the support. So sometimes when I look back, it's hard. But Imi's come a long way from when we first started her EHC process. Um, so I remember the that was all submitted in December and we got a letter through within a few days saying, you know, um, it's been approved and we will assess. And then um, she already had an educational psychologist that was working with her. And then she went to the nursery to see her as well. So all of her assessments went towards the assessment process. The speech and language therapist and the occupational therapist who was working at her nursery with her, all their reports went in as well. And it was just such a smooth transition from start to finish because it was the nursery that was taking the lead and then parents were kept in the loop via like email phone calls and follow-ups and i um i looked over everything at every stage to make sure i was happy to make sure like the targets that they set i was happy with um if i felt there was anything that needed to come out or anything that needed to go in so although i wasn't the primary one taking the lead on the plan this time i was still fully involved and um, I don't think great's the right word. I would say it felt great to not be 
like taking the lead and lead, leaving it to someone else to do but it was like there wasn't this strain or battle on my hands thinking oh my gosh what if she doesn't get the plan what if this what if that because actually she was guaranteed to get it and she did get she did get it um and once she had the plan in place i think we got it in the may before she started school now emmy's been at her current school for two years so yeah she started school in 2022 so the process was started in 2021 so we got it in May 2022 and um, I started looking around schools, settings for Imi. At first I thought she would need a highly specialist placement. I found a, looked at a mainstream school that had a new base that was opening. Sorry, Raven has just woken up from her nap. That had a new base opening so she would have been the first cohort of children to start there um, but this base it was in a school that had like a swimming pool there'd be an occupational therapist there a speech and language therapist there would be six children in our class with three so a, a class teacher and two tas um and i think as a parent you get a feel for a school and if you think your child would do well there and i got a really really great feel for this school i asked questions about what kind of support would be in place um if they'd have like communication books so we would know what was happening throughout the day how they would manage um danger awareness um i'm trying to think um what else how they would support in like her understanding and getting her language to develop hey hey it's okay if there would be like makaton training courses to support parents um if all the staff were trained in working with children who were autistic or had additional needs um if what it said in the ehcp they would follow that because i know you know not every setting follows exactly to the t what it says in the ehcp but for me i had to make sure that you know the targets that were set the that the school was able to meet her needs and that you know she'd have the opportunity to do all these things to help her thrive fast forward second year in to school she's in year one now massive massive change like she has done so well and she didn't need the specialist setting like i thought imogen is a very very intelligent and clever child i think some people think if a child's autistic or non-verbal they are stupid they don't have no understanding that's not the case imogen has now started talking she's found her voice she's always had a voice but she has verbally found her voice she's communicating in many different ways she is still classed mainly as non-speaking but she uses makaton she uses a communication book um she has speech and language at school which has helped her so much her understanding in some areas is just amazing like i can ask her who her friends are and although it's not very clear, I can make out what she's saying. She now refers and calls me mummy where she was never, ever doing that before. She attempts to say her name. Uh, she still uses Makaton a lot to um, communicate. But the things she is doing is amazing. She's got a little personality. If she doesn't want to do something or wear something, she definitely stands her ground and 
she she um stands her ground and until she gets the shoes she wants to wear or the coat she wants to wear you know she she won't give up a fight so it's amazing she before she wasn't really interacting with like her brothers and sisters um or even you know playing with other kids this time two two and a half years ago now she plays alongside the children really well plays together does a lot of activities with her friends at school with her cousins it's just so beautiful to watch how far she's come and how much she has developed with the right support in place and i'm just so pleased i have such a good um good relationship with her school with her teachers uh the communication um is amazing they have a communication sheet that comes out every day that tells you what they've done uh they have newsletters it's just it's so good i'm really happy and all her targets that were set for reception she smashed them and now she's on to new targets so it just really goes to show you know with the right help and support our kids can thrive and having the ehcp has really helped because without that ehcp it would have definitely been a different story education would have been a struggle i'd have been worried to leave her in just any setting so i'm so fortunate that this time round the ehcp process was simple and easy there was no fighting it was guaranteed because she was in a um, setting at the time when the nursery applied where most of the children had additional needs or a communication and um, language concerns around that so yeah I'm just fortunate and it's such a long process I'm so happy I don't have to go through applying for that again the only things we have now is reviewing it each year and making sure she's meeting her targets and that they're realistic targets and yeah I can't complain it's been it's been a roller coaster of a journey with Jaden um Immy, Immy not so much because she's had early intervention from 14 months and that has been a huge factor in how far she's come now as well as, you know, me um, doing therapy at home with her and her being in the right setting. Um, thank you for staying tuned if you've got to the end um, and please like and subscribe to our channel to stay tuned and up to date with all the videos that we post.